Hi, welcome back to Securities Regulation. We're on lecture number 13. And this time, we're still on key concepts. We're on reservations and allocations. Now, when I'm offering shares to the public, usually all my shares, all shares in, a, in an IPO are fully subscribed. In some cases, we may say that they are oversubscribed. What this means is that the public is demanding more shares from the company than are available. This is known as oversubscription. We'll talk about how to deal with oversubscription and book building at a later stage. So what the company can do, so it becomes very competitive to actually get shares in an initial public offering. Now, the ICDR allows companies to set aside some amount of shares in reserved categories, right? Reserved for whom? Reserved for employees, shareholders of listed subsidiaries of the company, as well as promoter companies. I can set aside up to 5% of my offer to public for employees. I can set aside a further 10% to shareholders of my listed subsidiaries, as well as promoter, um, as well as promoter companies, right? As a result, shareholders and employees who are related to my company, who are related to me, they have an added advantage of having a reservation. Now, from the entire offer to public, whatever is not in the reserved category is, is, is referred to as the net offer to public, right? This net offer to public is further subdivided. It is subdivided into categories for quibs, HNIs or non-institutional investors and retail investors. This sub allocation depends upon whether the company is doing an IPO through the 6-1 or the 6-2 route, through the performance route or the market route. If a company is going through the performance route, then not more than 50% of the net offer to public shall be offered to quibs. From the remaining 50%, HNIs or non-institutional investors or high net worth individuals get 35% and retail investors get 15% allocation. However, if you recall that under regulation 6.2, if I'm doing an IPO, 75% of my shares must be bought by qualified institutional buyers, which means that I have to allocate at least 75% of my net offer to public to qualified institutional buyers. Out of the remainder 15, uh, out of the remainder 25%, 15% go to non-institutional investors and 10% only to retail investors. Now think about what we talked about in previous lectures. A company going under 6.2 does not meet the financial performance criteria and therefore is, is deemed to be a risky proposition which is why retail investors are restricted to only 10%. Now, amongst the qualified institutional buyers, you can have a certain subcategory called anchor investors. Now, anchor investors are much like anchor shops or anchor stores at a mall. Think about the most recent mall you went to. Chances are that there would have been a very large departmental store, such as a, a West Side or a Pantaloons or a Zara or a Marks and Spencer or an H&M that would occupy multiple floors of the same mall. Now, these are typically well-known brand names, which ensure that there is a steady footfall into the mall. As a result, these are known as anchor stores. Once there is a steady footfall into the mall, there will be other shops that will take up positions, that will take up leases within the mall. Anchor investors work in pretty much the same way. Anchor investors have to be qualified institutional buyers who buy shares in the company or who buy shares, um, well, as part of the initial public offering a few days in advance. Before the public starts buying these shares, the anchor investors would have already committed to buy a certain number of shares of the company. Now, let's say if I have a company going public, it's doing an IPO, and I announce to the world that, let's say, BlackRock 
Lehman Brothers, HDFC and LIC are my anchor investors. What does that do to the market? It sends a signal to the market saying that these highly sophisticated and qualified and experienced financial institutions have faith in the company to buy shares in advance. As a result, the signal that goes to the market is that this is a safe company, this is a good investment, and as a result, more and more people will want to buy shares in this company. So anchor investors are used as, a, you could say, a marketing proposition to tell the market that this is a good company, that you should invest in it. So this, like this part of this segment has been about the um, sub allocations and the reservations of the offer to public and the net offer to public. We can set aside reservations for employees and shareholders of companies that are related to my company. We then have seen how the net offer to public is allocated between qualified institutional buyers and non-institutional investors and retail investors. And we've seen what anchor investors can do.